Welcome to MMA Play 365. I'm Newsom and I'm here to give you a Bayes AI recap from our UFC prediction software from last weekend's UFC event at UFC Vegas 69, which was headlined by Erin Blanchfield versus Jessica Andrade. We've got a number of real good solid winners in this recap. We've also got a very surprise prediction as well that lost. So from a negative side, we're always transparent. There's always going to be solid winners, but every now and again, it's not often, it's probably maybe sort of one every like two or three events. We'll just have that one standout prediction, which, you know, I'll look at pre-fight and just think, yeah, that ain't playing out that way. And, you know, it doesn't. So I'll run through that right at the end, but we'll jump straight into the solid winners. And where better to start than Erin Blanchfield versus Jessica Andrade. Now, this was actually quite mixed as well because I saw a lot of cappers, myself as well, that bet Erin Blanchfield. But I also saw a ton of Jessica Andrade siders and betters onto the other side as well. So with the AI favouring Erin Blanchfield... Definitely, definitely interested and we'll talk through it a little bit as well. So from a straight pick prediction, Bayes AI had Blanchfield to win the fight at 56%. So odds implied on 56%, Bayes AI was saying that Erin Blanchfield should have been a minus 127 favourite, which you actually look at the fight and you're probably not too far off wrong with that. But you could have got Blanchfield from anything between plus 100 to plus 165. Blanchfield opened at plus 165. All the money came in on her. And she even closed, I think, at one particular bucket, minus 105. So the line dropped significantly throughout the week. So either that, either way, though, even if you got the minus 105 compared to Bayes AI's prediction you'd have still got some value there as well. I personally got Blanchfield at plus 150. That was the best line that was available to me in the UK. So I just had to wait for it to be released in the UK. If you got anything higher than that, then... I mean, listen, if you got anything... If you got plus money on Erin Blanchfield, you got value, in my opinion, because she should have been that slight favourite. And Bayes AI agreed, saying that she should have been minus 127. Now, we're going to go one step further with the Bayes AI prediction, because if you look at Blanchfield inside the distance, so with Bayes AI, the inside the distance is just adding the knockout percentage and the submission percentage together, and you're getting 31% from Bayes AI. Now, odds implied at 31% is plus 223. So Bayes AI is basically saying that Blanchfield to finish Jessica Andrade by any means necessary is or should be plus 223. Now, at the bookies, you'd have got anything from plus 250 to plus 300. So there was actually more plus 300s from what I saw there was just a couple of bookies that had it at plus 250 so depending on where you're betting you could have got up to plus 300 on Erin Blanchfield to finish the fight it had been a cash ticket it had been value from what Bayes AI was saying as well so again another solid arm or leg to this Erin Blanchfield prediction from Bayes AI and now we're going to go one step further. So Erin Blanchfield to win by submission because, listen, she's the submission specialist. She's the grappling specialist in the fight. If she was going to finish Andrade, although Blanchfield's striking actually looked massively improved, but it was always going to be that submission. So I... Blanchfield to win by submission, 19% from Bayes AI. At 19%, the odds implied were plus 426, so it's a high line. Obviously, you know, you're picking a, a specific finish against Andrade as well, who is a world-class fighter and at the top of uh, at the top of pretty much every weight division she fights at. But at plus 426, the odds at the bookies are actually plus 350 to plus 400. So there wasn't actually any value in betting Erin Blanchfield to win by submission. If you wanted the value, the absolute value here was in the money line of Blanchfield just playing a straight to win. But if you wanted to go a little bit further for those better odds, then the value... In going further was actually in the inside the distance bet for Blanchfield to finish the fight in any way possible, opposed to Blanchfield actually winning via submission. So all in all, really happy with Bayes AI. It was absolutely nailed that fight. And Erin Blanchfield, of course, ended up making it look much easier than I think a lot anticipated, but Bayes AI knew it was there and uh, knew Blanchfield was going to get that win. The next solid winner to talk about. This is one I went head-to-head -head with Bayes AI, and when I go head-to-head -head with Bayes AI, it normally only ends up one way, which is annoying because I'm losing a lot of money when this happens. We've got Jamal Emmers versus Hussein Askabov. Now, Bayes AI had Jamal Emmers to win at 51%. Now, what I'm actually really happy with this, and I just want to make something clear, I didn't bet Askabov because he had 
23 wins and zero losses. I knew the record was padded. I said it in my podcast when I was breaking it down, that there was definitely some padded fights. I bet Hussein Askarov because I saw a quality in his striking that I thought Jamal Emmers would struggle against. But it just seemed like Hussein Askarov, maybe the moment got to him, maybe it was you know, due to it, him fighting his first fight, upper weight division, now his body's filled out, I don't know. But Hussein Askarov, I didn't bet because of the record. However, when you're looking at Bay's AI, Bay's AI is looking at statistics, it's looking at records, it's looking at numbers. So what I'm actually really impressed with, with the Jamal Emmers at 51%, because Bay's AI was basically saying it was a coin flip with an edge over to Emmers. But Bay's AI also didn't take the 23 and a record into consideration, which I think that a lot of other algorithms maybe potentially would because the record's vast and it's seeing a massive load, a massive amount of wins and zero losses. But Bayesley Eye looks further into the numbers than that and it actually came out with Emma's should be slightly, well, I'll say slightly favoured. It is slightly favouring Emma's at 51%, but Emma's at 51%, the odds implied on that is minus 104, which is around your pick'em line anyway with the bookies having their margin in each odd that's been put out there now you could have got emmers anywhere from plus 110 to plus 200 so similar to the blanchfield betting line emmers opened up plus 200 all the money came in on him throughout fight week he ended up getting down to plus 110 more money came in back on ask above late he closed at around plus 130 so any betting line you'd have took on jamal emmers for last saturday night that had been value on compared to where bay's ai was saying that the value should have been he should have been minus 104 you'd have got good plus money on jamal emmers another solid prediction in my opinion in the next solid winner we've got philippe lins versus ovince saint Prue osp now base ai had lins to win at 53 percent odds implied at 53 percent is minus 113 now philippe lins actually opened at around minus 130 so there's no value there he closed at around minus 200 which the value gets even worse so from the money line perspective there wasn't any value in philippe lins from what base ai was predicting from the percentage perspective however you go one step further. Philippe wins to win inside the distance, win by any means necessary, add the knockout and submission percentages together, and you get Linz inside the distance at 42% to finish OSP. Now at 42%, the odds implied there is plus 138. Now if you actually look at Linz inside the distance, you'd have got a plus 165 or a plus 175 betting ticket on that. So there was definite value in Linz inside the distance, definite value which means that you know, if you are betting Linz and using Bayes AI to do so, you wouldn't have bet the money line. You'd have just taken him inside the distance. We can go one step further where there's some value there as well. Linz to win by KOTKO, which of course he did. 29% from Bayes AI. Now, odds implied, that's plus 245. Now, the odds you would have been getting on Linz at KOTKO, there were some books that had him around plus 240, which again, really, really, really not so much value. It's slight, but, you know, we've got to go on the not so much value side. However, there were some books that had it at plus 265. So depending on where you bet, there could have been value. But if you were, again, using Bayes AI just to bet this fight in particular, you just go inside the distance because that's where the definite value was across the board at every bookie. But again, there was some value in KOTKO, no value in the money line of Lynn. So again, another example of if you are using Bayes AI, really look at all the options available to you start comparing them to the bookies odds because you will start finding value like you might have just looked at Linz at 53 percent and think now nah, he's minus 200 that's not worth it and then move on but there's actually value within the rest of the predictions that Bayes ai is giving you so another real good example of that and again in my opinion a solid prediction because of that also and the final solid winner in this section we've got clayton carpenter versus Juan camilo ronderos so carpenter to win Bayes ai had at 59 percent Odds implied at 59% is minus 144. Carpenter at the bookies was anywhere from minus 320 to minus 350. So absolutely no value, which is going to beg the question, why have I included him in the solid winner section? Well, actually, one of the trends that I've noticed with Bayes AI is it's doing a really good job of predicting correctly these newcomers to the UFC. Now, I know Ronda Ross has already had one fight in the UFC. Um, it ended very quickly, though, and you know there's not going to be much stats on him from a UFC perspective, but outside of the UFC, like Bayes AI is doing a really good job of picking these um, 
of picking these winners. And look, I know Carpenter was a minus 320 to minus 350 favourite, but Bezai doesn't know that. Bezai is only going on the numbers and the stats, and actually Ross doesn't have bad numbers either. So, yeah, I, I, again, the reason I'm adding it in there as a solid winner is just because it's yet another fighter that's making his UFC debut that the Bayes AI software is correctly predicting to win. And it's not just throwing it out at 50%, you know, at near 60%, it's relatively confident as well. So, yeah, that's why it's a solid winner. And we're going to move on to the bad losses section. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this doesn't happen often. It's normally one fight out of an entire fight card every two, three, maybe four events. But there was one in this card. And basically, it's a prediction that I'm looking at pre-fight thinking, no, that's not right. And then, well, no, that it, not that it's not right, but just looking at that thinking, this isn't going to play out how Beza I thinks it's going to play out. And then it actually playing out the way I thought it was going to. And... That bad loss fight from last week was Myra Bueno Silva versus Lena Landsberg. Now, Beze I had Landsberg favoured to win at 54%, so not favoured massively, but basically at 54%, odds implied is minus 117. So Landsberg at the bookies was plus 400, a massive 4 to 1 underdog. Silver to win. On the flip side from Beze I was obviously 46%, odds implied on that, plus 117. So Beze I was saying that Silver should have been plus money, but he was actually, she was actually minus 500 at the book. He's a massive 5-1 to one favourite. So the fight played out exactly, you know, closer to the bookies where, you know, Silver went out there, she was dominant, and she ended up getting Lena Landsberg out of there, who never seemed to be in the fight. So yeah, every now and again, look, we're predicting... Bayes AI is predicting every single fight on every single UFC event. We're not isolating specific fights. So every now and again, there is going to be a fight that crops up like this. And this, well, I was going to say this week had one, last week had one. You know, going into UFC Vegas 70 now next week, you know, I'm interested to see where Bayes AI is for that event. But yeah, we're done for this recap for UFC Vegas 69 overall. Really happy, some really solid predictions, which I've just gone through. And of course, that one wild... Crazy prediction that will naturally happen from time to time. Like I said, we don't isolate fights. We give predictions for every single fight and every single fight card. Now, just a quick one for next week and the week after as well. So I'm actually flying out on my honeymoon, which I did discuss in the main podcast, the breakdown podcast for UFC Vegas 70. I fly out on my honeymoon at the end of this week. So for the next two weeks on the main podcast, we are having Sean Sniper MMA, whichever one you want to call him, our DraftKings DFS advice expert at MMA Play365 take over the main podcast. But as for the Bayes AI recaps, there won't be a recap for the next couple of weeks. Once I'm back from my honeymoon, we'll get everything back rolling again, get everything back started and go back to normal. But for the next few weeks from the Bayes AI recap in particular, I am going to be enjoying my time in the Dominican Republic. So with the Bayes AI recap, I'll see you all in a few weeks. I'm Newsom. Thanks for listening and thanks for tuning in.